Good morning, everyone. Let's all stand, if you're able, and sing number 97 in your hymn book, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. I was looking at this, Edward Peronet. He was like 1600. It's a good old hymn speaking of uh, the character of our Lord Jesus. Number 97. <laughs> standing let's pray heavenly father we're so thankful <clears throat> we're thankful for the opportunity to be in this country where we can we can serve you and we can worship you freely i pray for those where that's not the same i think of uh, the believers in afghanistan today that have their culture has changed and the difficulties they might be experiencing today i pray for those believers that you would give them strength give them endurance and give them preservation and you would meet their every need uh, Lord I pray for other places in this world where people cannot freely worship you I pray for that it's it's difficult but I pray you give strength and uh, your Holy Spirit to protect them and guide them I pray for the gospel as it's preached all over this world that it would make a difference that it would make a difference in our lives today pray for those who aren't here today be with uh, Rusty and Brandy, as uh, they're in Phoenix, and I know they're sure with Alex worshiping the Lord. I pray you would just be with them and give them safety as they travel back. Heavenly Father, I pray uh, for others that couldn't be here today. Uh, lift them up, Lord, and keep them safe. I know many have uh, come down with uh, COVID. Uh, that there's students that are coming down with it. I pray that you give protection and guidance and help of the administrators as they deal with all these things. And Lord, in all these things, we ask that you would be glorified in our lives as we react, as we go throughout our days, that we would show forth the love of Jesus in all that we do. And Lord, help, again, continue to help us as we worship you here today, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. Let's uh, do our next song, which is number 103, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord, 103.
Steadfast love of the Lord. We, we think we've done this. It's a really easy song. We sing it a couple times. It's actually a verse from, I think it's from the Psalms. So let's do it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Try to make it as flat here. Here we go. this. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Hold it. Hear it. scripture, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, like I mentioned in prayer, uh, the Bois family is out of town, and, you know, they take up a pretty large part of our group, so we're missing them today, and, uh, uh, they're, they're in Phoenix, and let's pray for them as they travel, and um, hope you all had a good week. We're back at school. I think this is the third week of school, right, Sam? Yeah, three. We've done three, and then uh, we're starting. It's hard to believe. You know, it's almost like half of, a, half of a quarter, you know. It's an eighth of the school year has already gone by. Now, that's such a strange thing to think about. It's still the summer. You know, we get done. It, we started right in July, and uh, anyway, so here. Let me help you with that. There's this one right here. Yeah. So, anyway, we, uh, but uh, time keeps moving on. And as we get older, it seems to move faster, doesn't it? That's definite, uh, that's a definite thing, I think so. But anyway, if you'll take a look at your bulletin, continue to pray for uh, uh, the COVID. Uh, 
a couple of our young people, uh, we need to pray for them. I think they, they weren't sure about having COVID, but we need to pray for them. Um, we'll probably have to miss a little bit of school, so let's pray for those folks. Uh, and Wednesday, we'll have our um, Bible study online. We want to welcome anybody who'd like to be a part of that. It's just a short time. We pray. We spend some time. Brother Don from Thousand Oaks, California, when it's hot, <laughs> He joins us every Wednesday, so it's nice to see him. He keeps in touch with us. I appreciate his faithfulness to that. We're looking in the Proverbs in our daily, uh, daily Bible study. If you'd like to be a part of that, that's on Facebook. You can join our site. And then Saturday, uh, and actually it should say Sunday, because we're meeting on Sundays now for our youth meeting. It says Saturday, but it should say Sunday night. August 29th will be our next fellowship. We're not going to meet today uh, because of some of the issues with kids not being able to come. So we'll be, we'll be meeting next Sunday night, and uh, it's been a great time. We're doing The Christian Worldview. Here's the book that we're using. It's called The Christian Worldview, A Student's Guide by Philip Riken. Philip Riken, I'm trying to think where he, where he is. His, uh, he's at Wheaton College. He's, he's the president of Wheaton College. This is a really excellent book, Challenging the Kids, and we're having some great discussions, and they're excited about uh, knowing how to answer the questions. And so we're, I'm just excited about our young people. So pray for them as they, as they grow. We have two kids at River Valley, so pray for them that they can be a light down there. And then we have one at Mojave. Uh, and pray for our kids at Mojave. I, um, <coughs> I haven't been able to make connections with the Christian kids to be able to start our club up again. So pray, I'm, 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 I'm burdened for that. So Jeremy, one from Mojave, I've been talking with, He's excited to lead, but we can't make it with anybody. For me, and hopefully, uh, fine. I know there's. I know we have Christian kids, but uh, trying to gather them together sometimes is difficult. So pray for us as we do that. And then, I think that's about it. So let's take our offering today. Let's ask God's blessing. Heavenly Father, we're thankful. For the opportunity to give here, this is our time for worship through giving, and I pray that you'd help us to give cheerfully and thankfully, because you are the one who is the giver of great gifts. Help us, Lord, as we, as we do this thing, and help us to do it with the right heart attitude, we pray in Jesus' name. One more song with the guitar, and then we'll uh, go to the word. And that song is instead Grace and Mercy.
song we haven't done this time. You guys did great for the first time. I'm missing my um, musical ministry crew. I guess I should call them that. And the tech crew as well. <laughs> We're just muddling through our best. So, thanks. Is there anything you want to do? <coughs> One more thing we got to do. Anyway, hope you guys had a good week. I was, I don't know if you guys, it was just drier this week. So if it's dry in Bullhead, I'm okay with the heat. <laughs> if there's a, over 10% over humidity, over 5% humidity, I don't like it. Like you, because at nighttime it's still, it stays hot. You know what I'm talking about. Like at about 7, 8 o'clock, you walk outside and you don't want to go outside. Now, I, I don't mind it being hot during the day. You're used to it being hot during the day. And it's dry and you feel the heat, you know, whatever. You go inside. But then it's nice to just take a walk. So last night I walked along the river and it, it was warm, but it wasn't too hot. It was just really nice. And it was really that way all week. The humidity kind of went away. I don't know if the monsoons are over. Sometimes that means good things for us because then the temperature does kind of gets cool at night. And then it starts to come down, temperature starts to come down. But it's been a pretty hot summer. We've had a lot of 120 days. That can wear on you. And we probably need to schedule, schedule um, Sunday in the mountains, don't you think? I think it's time for that. So we'll, we'll put that on the calendar. Uh, I haven't got anything yet, but I'll talk to the rest of our folks. And we'll plan a trip to the Wallapais. That's always a good time. We've done that uh, almost every single year that I can remember. So we'll plan for that. We're in the book of Acts this morning, if you'd like to turn there. In the book of Acts. I'd like to just start off uh, reading a story that I heard of. Um, and uh, one, of, one of the messages, one of the areas of uh, emphasis that I like to make today, it says, tell the world that you're a Christian, is the title of my message. But we're going to look at the beginning of the Apostle Paul's ministry. He goes from persecutor of Christians to getting hit by the bright light, blindness, uh, difficulties, responding to God in the correct way that God wanted him to, converted to the cause of Jesus, and then he jumps right into ministry. And you go, well, how does he do that? Well, God was preparing him. And if you remember, he knew the Bible like no one did. He just didn't, he wasn't applying it correctly. He, he was not recognizing the Messiah Jesus. Uh, he, it was, like a, it was like a person who understood the entire Old Testament. There really wasn't a New Testament written yet. Uh, an Orthodox Jew who studied the Bible all their lives. They went to Sabbath school. They knew the Bible just like the back of their hand. They memorized lots of scripture. They knew all the stories. They knew the Old Testament ways that then they missed out on Jesus. And they become very judgmental, pharisaical as we call them, filled with all the rules and the laws that overcame what really is, you know, like we talk about this a lot, and the kids asked me this at the last meeting we had. Mr. Evans, the Old Testament believers, tell me about them, what are they like? The Bible says their faith is the same in the book of Hebrews. And that's hard for sometimes to grasp. It is for me, I'm, I'm going I'm to tell you that. But the Bible tells me that it's true, and I believe it to be true. And I believe, is it Abraham who's the friend of God? Wasn't Abraham the friend of God? Moses, uh, David's the, God, the, the man after God's own heart, even though he was a difficult, had difficulties and sinned and turned, his, turned, turned against God, not against God, turned his back on God at part of his life. But he was a friend, and <clears throat> there was grace in their lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. They understood that, and sometimes it took those sacrifices that they would make to maybe understand the grace and understand that God was the only way for salvation. Those Old Testament believers had that. But here, Paul, <clears throat> excuse me, Paul was a guy like that. He had the Old Testament. 
I say like that because he didn't believe like Abraham did. He didn't believe like David believed. He was missing and out, missing out. But somewhere, well, God reaches down and challenges his heart. Reaches down in that bright light and he's converted and his life is changed. But Paul jumps in and gets involved right away. I want to read the story to you. The United States Navy has over 700 ships that comprise what is called the Mothball Navy. These vessels anchored in various harbors around the country receive regularly maintenance to prevent rust, but they're just sitting there doing nothing, even though they require a lot of money and effort to maintain them. Ask any pastor and he will tell you that one of the frustrations of the ministry that there are so many mothballed Christians in the church. They sit harbored there week in and week out. They require maintenance, especially when they have a problem, but they're not doing anything to serve the Lord. Pastors call this the 80-20 rule, that 20% of the Christians do 80% of the work. That's not the way it should be. If we've been saved from our sins, we should, out of love, be zealous for the, the ministry and for serving Christ. Uh, if we're going to be like Jesus, our focus in life should be to serve him. Immediately after describing the dramatic conversion of Saul, Luke goes on to tell of his initial efforts in serving the Lord, and that's what we're reading about today. He did not hang around. He was not a mothballed Christian. He got involved right away. So let's look at the scripture. We did the first part of Acts last week. We're in Acts chapter 9, and let's look at what the scripture says. So Paul uh, has the bright light. His vision is restored. He believes. Jesus, God talks to him, and he believes. And then we read the rest of it. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon his name? And has he not come here? For this purpose, bring them bound before the chief priests. But Paul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus, Damascus by proving that he was the Christ. Let's see, I might have, let's see. Um, let me. Just a minute, I'm going to. Look back here. Um, I wanted to refer back to Paul and see his baptism. Um, let's see. Let's see, hold on. Hold on one second. I'm going to get there. Let's see. Yeah, I, I needed to back up to verse 18. That's where I'm getting confused. So verse 18 is not here, but I'll read it to you. Immediately something like scales fell off of his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and, and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. So that's what I was searching for verse 18 and 19 because it got cut off when I put it on the slide. So uh, the first thing in Paul getting involved was his baptism. He recognized the need to show, make that public statement of his conversion. He wanted to do it as soon as he could. God was working in his life, had saved him, and now it was, let's get involved, and he was baptized. I wanna, uh, and that, that should be a challenge for all of us. That's one way we can show that we are serious about serving Christ is, is baptism. And it's, uh, you know, the Bible does not give any in the scripture. It's, not, it's our belief. It's our, our faith in Christ that saves us. The baptism is that confirmation that God is really working in our life. Pray for some of our young people who are contemplating that. I think we're going to have a baptism in a couple of weeks of some of our young people that have really shown the desire to serve Christ. They're ready to move on. They're ready to say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And baptism is a way that we do that. 
in front of, in front of our friends, in front of the believers. I like to do it at the river because we do it in front of people that aren't believers. And I, every time we do it at the river, we get people coming up. Man, what are you doing? That's baptism. Well, yeah, I was baptized when I was a kid. I've not been in the church. You know, it's a, it's a testimony. And so Paul, he wants people to know that. So right away, he gets baptized. That's the first step in getting involved. He worked immediately. It says in verse 19 here, and he was strengthened for the ministry. That got cut off too. Let me read that to you again. He was strengthened. Uh, in verse 19, read it again. He, was, he regained his sight. He arose, was baptized, and eating food, he was strengthened. So he was strengthened in his heart. You know, he, he uh, had been through all this time. He hadn't been eating, and, and he was ready to serve Christ. So he, was, he worked immediately. He was strengthened in the Lord. And it's the Holy Spirit that was working in his life. All of us have the Holy Spirit when we're saved. We have to let the Holy Spirit work in our life. And people might say, I don't know what that means. It's such a supernatural kind of out there thing. And I, 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 I try and explain to people, wow, then just get into the Word of God. Make the Word of God a part of your life. Read it. Study it. Get into the Word of God. You might suffer persecution, but the presence of the Holy Spirit will sustain us and get us through. He could have sat back and just thought, I'm new at this, I'll kick back, I'll just kind of wait, I'll just see what goes on. But Paul gets involved right away, and what, what, a, what a, a great example for us. Uh, let's look at verse 20 next. Verse 20 is right here. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying he is the Son of God. So he goes to the synagogues. This is Paul. They knew him as a man of the synagogue. He was a Pharisee. He knew the word of God. He had been in the synagogues studying, and they knew him. He jumps into that. He goes to the synagogues. He goes to his own people in verse 20, the people that knew him. Uh, that's who we need to take the gospel to, to people we know. Show people from the Bible who Jesus is and what he, what he did by dying on the cross. That's what Paul did. He was calling God his own father, making himself uh, Jesus. He was telling about Jesus, who, who had made himself equal with God. And this was something they were foreign to. They were not accepting Jesus as the Messiah. And that was a problem. And, uh, you know, throughout the scripture, we can read about those times where Paul goes in. He, he goes right to the people. He goes to the synagogue. So he's not afraid to do that. So he takes the scripture to people his own people. We, he confounded them sometimes, bringing the scripture to them. They didn't always accept it as, as uh, truth. They didn't just accept it right away. So it was a difficult task that he was doing, but he continued to take the Bible. He went to his own, went to the synagogues. We read in verse 21, and all who heard him were amazed and said, is not this the man who made havoc? So a lot of them are like, isn't this the guy who went after the Christians? And he's not come here for his purpose to bring them bound before the chief priests? Aren't we used to the Saul that did that? No, Paul was changed. Saul was changed. Saul increased all the more in strength, confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. He preached Christ. And that is the, that's, the, that's our, always our primary message. It's not all the stuff that comes with being a Christian. It's Jesus. Jesus is always the primary message. And we believe in a triune God. It's Jesus is God. He's the only way. He's the only one that we need to accept. And so confounded even those people. But expect persecution from outside. And that's what Paul does in verses 23 through 25. Let's look at those verses. The basket. So we move from Paul and the baptism to the basket. Expect persecution from without. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him. But his disciples took him by night and led him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. So he continued to preach, preach the Bible. He continued in the synagogues preaching about about. Uh, the Lord, 
But here it says the priests. So this is, these are people that, according to this passage we see, these are people that were kind of people that maybe Paul didn't see all the time, the priests. And they plotted to him. It says when many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. The plot became known, and then he was spared from that. His life was threatened. Roles were switched. Paul was the persecutor. Now he's the persecuted. I mean, it doesn't take long for that to happen. Opposition is expected for the believer. But we need to continue to take a stand for the truth even when there's opposition. But through all of that, his life is preserved. God is there for him. They used, uh, the, the disciples used what was available to them and God preserved them. You know, they let him down in a basket. Such an interesting story. Uh, they, they, they were in uh, wherever they were staying. The only way to get out was through the window. So instead of just throwing him out the window, a basket let him out. The, I mean, maybe that was their, you know, <laughs> old time fire escape. I don't know. But he was let out. I mean, maybe it was a big basket like you would put bread in or something like that. And they let him out the window and he escaped from those that were plotting to kill him where he was gave the people the right knowledge to preserve him and he was experienced that persecution the persecution that he was inflicting now it's on him and then we continue on in verses 26 and 27 number three we read about Barnabas coming to the aid of of Saul when he had come to Jerusalem he attempted to join the disciples and they were all afraid of him for they did not believe that he was a disciple but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord who spoke to him, how at Damascus they had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So here we see, this is persecution. I say persecution from within, but it's just opposition. People were seeing Paul, Saul, and seeing what he was doing, and they just remember the persecution. You can't blame him, I guess you might say, the opposition that he had. They took and brought him, uh, and, and they were afraid of him. They're like, man, this guy, this guy was against us. How could he have been changed? Well, that's what happens. This is what happens when God comes into your life. He can change your heart. And Saul is that example. I mentioned this last week. Saul was that example of where when there's some difficulty, or it's just difficulty, when we, when we run into opposition, we look around us and we see people that are against God, never believe, and this is the phrase I talked about last week, with God, all things are possible. Is it possible that Saul the persecuted, persecutor could be converted? Is it, is it possible that this guy who turned his back uh, missed out on the Messiah, and was a persecutor of Christians, is it possible this person could be used of God? Yes. All things are possible. And I remind you again, you look around you and you say, wow, there's that you know, colleague, maybe a, uh, a friend, family member who says they're, they're, they're totally turned against God. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Think of Saul. God can save that person too. Those unbelievers that you think there's no way for them. It's impossible for God to save. Don't ever, don't ever think that. We should never have that attitude. Attitude that, that Jesus can save anyone. So, uh, that's the situation. Then Barnabas shows up. I uh, preached about him. He's one of my favorite Bible characters. He is the encourager. Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord. Barnabas knew about the story, kind of observed it. He'd watched it happening. And he said, look, I have seen what's been going on in his life. Barnabas was an encourager, a lifter up. He's that person that would go before. And he became that for Paul. They would go and do meetings in cities. And Barnabas was like the guy who would go before and he'd start talking to people and say, hey, we're having a meeting. The Apostle Paul is going to speak. He's going to preach the gospel. Let me tell you about that guy. He's my friend. He is a man of God. And Barnabas, because of his reputation as an encourager, he's the kind of when he showed up to town, people are like, oh yeah, Barnabas is here. Let's go talk to him because he's a, he's a man of love. 
He's a man of encouragement. He's a man that's going to be that person you can communicate with. Easy to talk to. You know, the guy who's out there, that, that, that's the gifts that we see in Barnabas. His name means encouragement. And he had to live up to that name. <laughs> and so when Barnabas says, hey, Paul, is, he's on our side. He's changed. He's, he's changed. He's different. People are like, yeah, that's Barnabas. We can trust him. And we're, you know, there was no one else that they could find that could have done such a thing. Maybe you're a Barnabas. Maybe you're that kind of person. You have that, those gift, that gift of encouragement uh, to go before. You know, to, to, to go before, bring people to the church, uh, challenge them about the word. Maybe you can be an encourager. Maybe you can do those things, you know, those, those things to help others uh, and, and, and encourage them towards the Savior. That's what Barnabas was doing. And people then accepted accepted um, Paul. And then finally, the last point I'm going to make today, the boldness, verses 28 through 31, experience is the best teacher. So what did Paul do? So he went out among them, them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and he disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. He just did the work of the ministry. He went out among them at Jerusalem, preaching the name of the Lord. And he talked to the Hellenists. You know, those are the Greek thinkers, the people that studied Aristotle and Plato and those kind of people. Paul went right to them. In a sense, it was, I'm sure this was kind of apologetics. You got questions? I've got answers. You think, well, Paul was prepared as a non-believer in the Messiah. He had learned how to think, he had studied, and then God used that, even though he wasn't using it for God at all in the beginning, but he used all that knowledge. You know, sometimes sometimes how, that, that may be how he works in our life. You know, we, we, we may be seeking knowledge, we may be seeking uh, how to work with people, different kinds of kinds of things that might be used even for secular kinds of things, but God uses it for his glory. And that's what we see in Paul. All that stuff that he had done, becoming that Pharisee, God was using it. And now he had the answers. He was giving the answers to those questions. You know, that's one of the things I'm emphasizing with the young people. Apologetics, answering, you know, giving the answers. You know, that there is a God that the creation happened, that God is the creator. You know, and we've been talking about some of those things. There's so many amazing, amazing arguments that we need to understand. Uh, you know, there's, you, 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 someone might walk up to you and say, I can't believe in God. I, I can't see him. He's not there. There's so many amazing things. Uh, one of the ones we were looking at is, you know, this world can't have just happened. There has to be a designer, a creator. That is an argument that's strong. What about right and wrong? How does that happen, right and wrong? You know, is it, is it just, you know, God is the beginning of morality. He makes the moral code. And, and only God can do that. It, it, it's got to start somewhere. Uh, so many really important arguments. I believe that's what Paul was answering. He was giving those answers. His mind had been prepared to make those, those answers. And then to speak of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul wasn't there. But he'd been around the people that were there. And they, he knew of, that, of, of, of the resurrection. And he had talked with people. And people, had, you know, all the, many of those disciples were, of course, were there when Jesus died and when he was resurrected. I mean, it's, it's possible Paul could have been around those places too, depending upon where he was. But those people were witnesses of the resurrection. And I'm sure they had questions about that. What do you mean the resurrection? We can't believe that. Well, how can you not believe it? Because the evidence is just stacked up that Jesus is the resurrected Lord. And he is the only one who could be that Messiah. The only one who could save. The only one who could be the sacrifice. 
Um, so Paul has spiritual impact right after his conversion. Like he gets involved in God's work. He is a great challenge to us. All of us have our place of influence. We can do so many things, small things, in being an example for Jesus Christ. Just being an example in the workplace is a great way to influence people. Being that example, looking for opportunities, being intentional in the way we can share our faith with others. Those are things we can do. You know, sometimes I've been neglectful. Sometimes I don't do enough. I'm challenged by Paul's example. Man, I wish I was as bold as he was. I ask for boldness. You know, in this message, I pray that I'll be more bold in, my me- in, in, in the way that I speak of my faith in this world. Paul gives us that example here. And that's our challenge for uh, each one of us, all of us. That's our challenge, that we're bold in our sharing of our faith and how God has worked in our life. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. I'm not going to have an invitation today. I'm going to challenge each one of us, though, about, about where you are with the Lord and your witness, like Paul. Paul was... He was changed. His life was changed in a miraculous way. God came down, that bright light and all of that. Now, most of us, we can't, we can't give testimony like that. But we can think of that time when Jesus saved us. When we could see, we could understand the gospel. And we know that the, the, the work of Jesus on the cross was applied to us. And all of us in our lives, sometime, sometime We believed in that. We trusted Jesus as our Savior. And so, for myself and for all of us, are we, you know, the question I have for myself, my own heart, is is am I doing those things to, to share that great message that changed my life? Am I sharing that with others? How can I be more intentional in sharing my faith in, in, in a similar way that Paul did. Heavenly Father, help me to do that. Help us all that are here today. Thank you for your word. Thank you how it instructs us and shows us how to live. May we live in the ways of the Bible, in the ways of the Holy Scripture. Every day that we live, Lord, help us to follow your path and go your way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.